Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Fran, I'm from Venezuela, and today we are going to be reacting to a video called 15 Best Things to Do in Stratford Upon Avon. So this is Shakespeare's um, birthplace, and probably, I'm guessing there's gonna be like, um, you can probably check out his house, you know, the house that he lived in or was born in, and because the town, it's probably very, um, um, I, I'm guessing like there's a lot of like Shakespeare theme places. So maybe like bars, um, and stores that are like Shakespeare theme. I don't know. I'm just taking a wild guess. So let's check it out and comment, like, subscribe and start. It looks very beautiful, like countryside. I'm guessing it's actually like a name, a name's called Stratford and it's up on Avon and Avon is another place, <laughs> I'm guessing. Welcome to Stratford upon Avon. Located some 100 okay, miles then. northwest of London, this is the beautiful birthplace of William Shakespeare. So to see or what not to see, that is the question. So in the words of William Shakespeare, <laughs> pray, Shakespeare follow please. and I'll show you. <laughs> Stratford upon Avon was founded in the 7th Avon. century AD by the Saxons when they invaded what is now Warwickshire. The town's name might look and sound a little bit unusual with all its hyphens, yes. but it's actually a mixture of Celtic and Saxon words. So oh. Strat means street, Ford is a lower part of a riverbed, and Avon was okay. a Celtic word for river. So literally Stratford upon Open Avon the means the street that leads to the fjord to cross the river. <laughs> Love that name. Oh, it looks very old. I like it. Welcome to the birthplace of William Shakespeare. Born on the 23rd of April, 1654, William Shakespeare was born here on the top floor next to a little fire. On the top floor. Now, it's lucky oh, wow. that William Shakespeare survived because his two siblings that were born before him actually passed away before they reached the age of one. The reason why is very because common there was an the outbreak time. of the plague. And it is believed that the only reason why Shakespeare survived was because his mother took him out into the countryside to protect him from the outbreak. Inside the building you can see where Shakespeare oh. grew up, where he had his meals, where he slept, where he played with his siblings and also tiny his house. beautiful garden and where tiny he bed. Play. Oh, I love it. There I love all There are two all interesting things. things that I've learned while being here, and that is the origins of two idiomatic expressions that we use every day that you may not know the origins of, and they both relate to sleeping. So have you ever said to sleep tight or to hit the hay? Yes. Well, sleep tight actually comes from the mattresses that were used at this time, back in the 16th century, that were made up of hay wow. and straw and any sort of other stuffing that was soft. So this is the mattress that people would sleep on. And during the night, obviously, all the contents would move and shift. So before going to bed, you would have to hit the hay to distribute <laughs> evenly the contents of the mattress. Oh so you would God, have all these so and bumps. Oh. Now sleep tight relates to what was supporting the mattress which was ropes and the ropes would be bound ropes. throughout the woodwork on the bed to protect the you mattress from falling them. through and to keep it tight. Oh. So in order to sleep tight you would need to tighten those ropes so you wouldn't have a uncomfortable sleep. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah everything is really like Shakespeare theme I like it. This is Shakespeare's new place. This is where Shakespeare lived from 1597 until the day he died in 1616. This isn't the house that he lived in, but this is the area where it was. His house was destroyed 250 oh, years ago, unfortunately. Oh my God. Um, but inside there is an exhibition on what so they think the ago. house looked like. It's actually a miracle that these things are semi-preserved because they're so old. It's over 500 years. The grounds here are very beautiful to walk around. They've got a whole bunch of commissioned pieces by the American artist Greg Wyatt. And each of the statues represent either a character or a passage from one of Shakespeare's works. Oh, that's and within so the nice. statues or the sculptures, they're like these hidden faces. So there's a lot of hidden yeah, it's very symbolism weird. in each of them. So yeah, yeah look I encourage you to take your time and wander around and have a look at each of them. Really beautiful. At the entrance to the garden, there is a sculpture that is inspired by the epilogue from The Tempest, where the main character is giving up his powers. Now, Shakespeare wrote this play in 1616, which is about three years before he passed away, and it's sort of considered like his final words and his sign-off, saying, this is it. Oh. 
For 19 years, Shakespeare lived at New Place and it was the only building that he actually bought for his wife and his family. He lived oh. here with his wife and two children, Judith and Susanna. Unfortunately, his son Hamnet died a year before he actually bought this building, so that's sad. Shakespeare oh. paid Is 120 the pounds for New Place, which is an obscene amount of money for the time. Consider really? that a schoolmaster's salary was only 20 pounds a year and Shakespeare paid 120 pounds just for this area. Now, this was the most expensive and the largest property in Stratford upon Avon at the time Whoa, and it was located was just opposite his school which he attended so we're going to head there now. I'm guessing he was rich because that's a lot of a lot of money. Thanks to the success of William Shakespeare's father, John Shakespeare, who was a glove maker, he was able to send Shakespeare to this schoolroom here behind me, adjoined by oh, the Guildhall. He attended good. the school between the ages of 7 and 14, between 1571 okay. and 1578. Seven the school years. is still in use up until 11 a.m. every day, and oh the God. every year still is chosen exists? to replace the quill in the hand of Shakespeare's monument at his grave. Oh my God, that's so cool! That's awesome! I can't believe this cool is still standing. Like, that's insane to me. It looks very bash. antique. I'm a bash. Ooh, ooh. I'm a bash. He's dressed as a Shakespeare character. It's a memory game, isn't it? It's how much you remember. And remember, uh, oh, I'll use the there. Memory is not seated up here. Memory is seated just here, where your heart is. Yes, because we say you learn things by heart. Oh, so it's here, true. It'll always, it'll always stay so we're inside yeah, the classroom where there is still a class happening. Now they're teaching a bit of Latin and a bit about the curriculum that Shakespeare would have learned when he attended this school. Now it's interesting because no in wonder the he was a poet. Is where Shakespeare would have sat. This room here is fairly recent, um, but when Shakespeare sat wow. next door, he would sit on what were called forms, not benches. So that's how we get the origins of being in first form, second form, third form. So it's important to note that at this stage wow, there were no girls in weird. class, it was just boys. So it's so inspirational yes. to be here in the classroom where William Shakespeare learned about all the classics, the Romans, the Greeks, all the literature that inspired him and his works throughout his 20 year career. An actual quill, oh my god! So located directly below the schoolroom, which is above me right now, this is the Guild Hall, and this is where William Shakespeare's dad was the bailiff or the town mayor. So when Shakespeare was five years old, he saw his dad in office. He was the mayor for just one year in 1568. Just one year, that's... Well, maybe it was the norm back in the day. Those are beautiful flowers. This is where Susanna, Shakespeare's daughter, lived in 1607 when she married Dr. John Hall. Oh, her daughter also lived there. He left a new place to Susanna, so when he passed away, she moved in with her husband. Wow, so there was like several generations that live in this town. Shakespeare generations. Beautiful gardens, like everything's so pretty. I love those flowers. Behind oh, me is Hathaway. Anne Hathaway's cottage, which is about 500 years old and located just a 20 minute walk outside Stratford upon Avon. Anne Hathaway lived here before she married William Shakespeare, and the two got married when William Shakespeare was 18 and Anne Hathaway was 26. And she was already pregnant, so they had a bit of a hasty oh. wedding. You can visit the cottage and go inside to see its original furnishings as well as the romantic garden outside. He was very young when he got married. But I think back in the day, I think maybe that was, that was normal, like you got married at 18, but it was very young. Oh, a horse! Oh my god, she Located <gasps> three and a half miles or 5.5 kilometers really, outside of Stratford upon front. Avon is Mary Arden's farmhouse. Mary Arden was William Shakespeare's mother and she it? lived here oh, until mother. she married John Shakespeare, William Shakespeare's father. They got married in 1557. There are two buildings on the site here and the so building behind me is called the Palmer's Farmhouse because up until the 2000s they thought that this was where Mary Arden lived with her family but it was actually the building next door. While the building behind me has oh. maintained its traditional Tudor look, the house that Mary grew up in which was built by her father Robert in 1514 oh, doesn't Brick. look quite as traditional. It's gone through a few different changes changes over the years but let's go oh, have a look wasn't the original. but it looks very pretty i love all those um like um original bricks oh my god a pig oh my god it's like a farm oh those beautiful this houses. here is mary arden's house so let's go take a look inside 
It's very big. Like I'm surprised by how big these house, these this houses are. It's a really low doorway, and the reason why it's so low is because in why? the 1600s it was very expensive to cut through any structural beams. Otherwise, it would have had to pay okay. extra to implement new beams. So this way, they cut halfway into it without compromising the structure of the building. But what would they need? But what would you need a door? I don't get it. I mean, Mary Arthur's farm is a working Tudor farm, it. so it's very much a great spot to bring families and spend the day. Okay, yeah. It it's covers 20 acres and there's lots of farm animals that you can interact with. They've got horses, cows, donkeys, rabbits, Six. birds, chickens, everything. Cheap. It's a great place to hang out for the afternoon or just for a few hours. Yes. Behind me is the Holy Trinity Church where William Shakespeare was baptized and buried. He died on the 23rd of April 1666 and was buried two days later on the 25th. Oh he was God. only 52 Did years old that? and he died as the result of alcohol poisoning of all things. And you can go inside oh and you God, can see he where he was issues. buried along with his family members. Yeah, that's so sad. I didn't know he was an alcoholic. He was very young. That's actually quite sad. This is Gower Memorial, which celebrates Shakespeare's work, and it was dedicated to the city of Stratford-upon-Avon by Lord Ronald Gower in 1888. He commissioned this memorial, and it took him 10 years to sculpt it and to fund it, most of it from his Ten personal years. finances. Placed around the memorial from are four statues finances. from Shakespeare's plays. You've got Falstaff, Lady Macbeth, Hamlet, and behind me is Prince Hal. That's kind of crazy. That's a lot of money and a lot what of years. What better place to watch a Shakespeare play than in Stratford-upon-Avon. The Royal Shakespeare Company has three theatres here in Stratford and the one behind me is the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. This is the main one and you can head to the top floor for a pre-show dinner where you get beautiful views over the River Avon. What better way to learn about Stratford-upon-Avon than joining the multi-award winning Stratford Town Walk. It goes for two hours and an adult ticket will only set you back six pounds. So let's go and join one. Stratford Town Walk. I love it. So I've just point. signed up for the Town Walk and they give you five vouchers that you can use at any one of the places on this list. So I highly recommend doing the tour at the start of your trip to make the most of these vouchers. Flood water levels. Oh my god, these are from floods. Oh yeah, like the baptism records. A fun and unique thing to do in Stratford upon Avon is to go street lamp post hunting. So this one What's behind that? me was donated from the state of Israel. There are about 50 different lamp posts here, and the reason why they're here is because a oh, man they donated. Who worked in the town council of Stratford on Avon. He asked his peers if they would donate a street lamp as a way of representing the different people that visited the town of Stratford upon Avon. Oh. So if you don't want to walk cool. all the way around the river, then you can catch Britain's last chain ferry, which will set you back just 50p. I love it. I don't know how, like, if fairies. Oh, yeah, because I was going to say, are fairies like with engines? So, so yes, yeah, so, like, and I'm going to the old thatched tavern, which dates back to 1470. And it is the only building in the city that has a thatched roof. Oh my god, I always wanted to look at those. I've never seen one in real life. Very traditional food, I'm guessing. Located behind me in the center of town is the Garrick Inn. Now between this one and the old Thatch Tavern, both claim to be the oldest pubs in Stratford-upon-Avon. <laughs> they what both makes claim this one special is that it's haunted, and it's also where they believe a bout of plague okay. broke out in 1564, which is the same year that Shakespeare was born. Okay, that's funny. She was like, ghost, it's haunted, but she didn't like, okay, we're just going to move on. Not explanation necessary. It's haunted. Okay. But who? Who's haunting this Time place? Time to get a swan's eye view of Stratford on this river cruise. It goes for 40 minutes and costs just £7 for an adult ticket. It looks actually very beautiful and I thought the town was like smaller, but if you need like, you can take like a boat ride. Maybe it's not that small. I love those trees, like overlooking the river. That's so beautiful. Well, that that's bridge. it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video about what to do in Stratford upon Avon. If you have, leave a nice big thumbs up, subscribe yeah, to my channel, nice. follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down below and I'll get back to you. Until next time, I bid you farewell. Bye. <laughs>
I have questions, um, mostly having to do with the ghost. Um, I don't know who's haunting the, the, the pub. Um, and I'm surprised that she didn't, like, she didn't really give, um, a lot of explanation on it. She was just like, it's haunted. So, okay, it's haunted. Um, we don't know anything about the ghost, um, or what the ghost actually does. Um, but I love this. I want to go to this place now. I want to plan a vacation there. Um, I think my favorite part was, I think I would definitely would go the fairy ride that looks, that looks beautiful, but also like the farm where, um, I think it's Mary, Mary, Mary something. Um, Shakespeare's mom, like, her, um, her house looks beautiful. I think that was my favorite part. You have like a little farm, um, with a lot of animals, which, you know, looks very nice. Um, and also I love the fact that there's like so much to, to do, I would think. Because when I was thinking like Shakespeare's um, birthplace, I would think maybe it's like a town with like a lot of things that are very like thematically Shakespeare. Um, but like I was thinking more like bars and like libraries or something like that. But it was nice that no, it's actually a town with a lot of history. Obviously a lot of things relate to Shakespeare. But um, it's very like well preserved. It's very beautiful. So even with like the Shakespeare part, like there's like it's worth to go there, and it has like so many like beautiful things that it's not just like you don't think I don't think you have to like necessarily know a lot about Shakespeare to enjoy this because it has so much. You know, it has the farm, those beautiful landscapes, um, a haunted bar pub i mean um so you know it's very for any like history buff or just you know if you want to look at something interesting like this seems like a beautiful town to visit um so so yeah now i want to go there and i think i think i was mispronouncing it it was a strat for upon avon i thought it was um like I I I I Avon. I don't know how it's pronouncing it, but it's Avon. And I love the fact that yes, it is a very weird name. But once she gives it an explanation, it's like oh, it just means like up on the river. Like <laughs> it's fine. Um, but yeah, that was it for today. And I'll see you soon. Bye.